Hi there, boys and girls. Welcome to our vodcast on the digestive system. This vodcast is going to discuss the functions of the digestive system, the parts of the digestive system, and the functions of the parts of the digestive system. So let's begin talking about the functions of the digestive system here. Now, our digestive system carries out three functions. Our first function of the digestive system is digestion, which is what the digestive system is named after. Digestion is our process in which we break down large molecules from our food into smaller molecules, and we'll get more into that in a second. The second function of the digestive system is absorption. So once we digest our food into smaller molecules, we can then take the nutrients, absorb them into our blood so our cells can get them. So that's what happens during absorption. And then lastly, we have elimination. Since we're unable to digest everything that we put into our bodies, there is undigested food that's left over and we have to get rid of that. So elimination is a process where undigested food is eliminated from the body. Now let's take a look at digestion again. When we digest our food, we digest it in two possible ways. The first type of digestion we're going to discuss is mechanical digestion. Mechanical digestion is the process in which we can physically break down our food. And one example of mechanical digestion is chewing. As we chew our food, we're grinding, we're smashing, and we're mashing up the food in our teeth. A second type of digestion that we carry out is also known as chemical digestion. In chemical digestion, we use chemical reactions and chemicals to break down large molecules into smaller ones. To do this, we use a couple of things. First of all, we use a chemical called acids, and we also use proteins that are called enzymes. And these enzymes help speed up the digestive process. Now those are our three functions of the digestive system. Let's go take a look at the parts of the digestive system. Now our digestive system is broken up into two main parts. We have our digestive tract and we have our accessory organs. Our digestive tract are the organs in which food directly passes through and they break down the food, they digest it. Our accessory organs, or organs that help out in the digestion by making chemicals, however, the food does not pass through them. So the organs in our digestive tract start out in the mouth, and they include the teeth and salivary glands too. So the mouth is where our food is broken down mechanically and chemically, and it's turned into a nice soft mass that will be easy to pass through. Once we finish chewing our food, we swallow it and it passes through the pharynx, which is your throat, and then it continues to go down this muscular tube called the esophagus. After the food passes through the esophagus, it ends up in a muscular bag called the stomach. When the stomach is done digesting the food, it passes it through a long network of tubing called the small intestine. And after digestion is completed in the small intestine, it gets put through the large intestine. At this time, digestion is completely finished, so we have whatever undigestible food left in our body. We turn that into a semi-solid waste, and then we store that semi-solid waste into a rectum, and then that semi-solid waste is expelled from the body through a ring of muscles called the anus. So these structures in our digestive system are parts of the digestive tract that you see in the red. Now, as you can see, we have three structures that have been unlabeled, and these are our accessory organs. So the first accessory organ that we have here is called the liver. And the next accessory organ that we have here is called the gallbladder. And then lastly, we have the pancreas, which is tucked away behind the stomach and the large intestine. So just in review, our digestive tract are structures that are labeled in red, and then our three accessory organs are the organs that are labeled in blue. So let's go visit Steve the skeleton to take a closer look at our digestive system. So here's our good friend Steve the Skeleton again, and he's going to help us through, like he has in other human body podcasts, and we're going to discuss the digestive system using him. Now, as I said, digestion occurs in the mouth first. So the mouth is the site where we can do both mechanical and chemical digestion. Mechanical digestion is carried out by our teeth, so when we bite off food, we end up chewing it and mashing it. In addition, chemical digestion occurs in the mouth because... We have glands that line the inside of our mouth called salivary glands. So these glands produce saliva, and that saliva has enzymes that carry out the chemical digestion. And this is what chemical digestion looks like in the mouth. 
So here we have a video clip. We have chocolate going into this person's mouth and they're chewing it up, breaking it down mechanically, and then swallowing it. And then next we're going to have a potato coming in, and this is important because your mouth breaks down carbohydrates primarily. So as we can see, a potato is filled with starches, and then we break those starches into smaller chains of starches. And each chain of starch, remember, is comprised of individual glucose molecules. So each yellow disc here represents a glucose molecule, which is a sugar. This Pac-Man structure over here is an example of an enzyme. And what the enzymes do is they break the bonds between the glucose to separate them from the chain, breaking down the starch into simple sugars. So that chemical digestion occurs in the mouth, and then when we're done chewing, we'll swallow it and it'll go into our next structure called the esophagus. The esophagus is a muscular tube that connects our mouth to our stomach. Now, the esophagus is not a hollow tube where food just slides down. Like I said, it's a muscular tube. So the food is literally pushed down through the esophagus using a series of wave-like contractions, which is called peristalsis. So let's take a look at what peristalsis looks like. So in this video that we're looking at, we're looking at a pathway in the digestive system. So this is a muscular tube. So once we hit play on this video, you'll see that the walls on the outside of the tube are going to close in. This is a peristalsic wave contraction. The muscles close in and then force the food down. So as this first wave goes by, a next wave of muscle contractions will then come into the screen. As this wave comes in, imagine your food is caught in front of this wave. As this wave closes up, it's going to push the food forward down through the opening. And that's how your food gets pushed through your esophagus through the process of peristalsis. Now once the peristaltic wave contractions push the food through the esophagus, it dumps the food into a bag-like structure called the stomach. And this is your stomach here. Your stomach can carry out both mechanical and chemical digestion, and we're going to take a look at what that looks like right now. Now this is a video clip of the inside of the stomach. This is the walls of the stomach, and you can see how it's folded, and this helps out in mechanical digestion. And in the middle here, we have somebody's lunch. It looks like they're eating some pasta and some vegetables with that pasta. So as we take a look at the top, You'll see peristalsis contractions will push the tomato in, and then the stomach begins to contract. As the stomach contracts, it's going to grind up the food in those folds that you see, carrying out mechanical digestion. And these contractions that are causing the mechanical digestion is done by peristalsis again. Now, as you can also tell, this food is sitting in some sort of a solution. Well, this solution is a solution of enzymes and hydrochloric acid. Chemical digestion occurs when the food is mixed with these enzymes and hydrochloric acid, and it turns a solid food that we ingested into our bodies and turns it into a liquidy mixture. And this liquidy mixture you see is located right here in this tube as it's starting to pass through the rest of the stomach. This watery mixture that's produced by the stomach is called chyme, and the chyme is produced so it can easily pass through the rest of our digestive system. Now, once digestion is completed in the stomach, the chyme will then travel through this network of tubing called the small intestine. And here's your small intestine right there. The small intestine is called the small intestine not because it's smaller than the large intestine in terms of length. It's called the small intestine because the opening or the width of the tubing is smaller than that of the large intestine. Before we get into the digestive process of the small intestine, our chyme is going to get mixed up with some solutions secreted by our three accessory organs. On the top again we have the liver. Then the liver is important because it produces a green substance called bile. And that bile is then stored inside of the gallbladder. And then our pancreas releases enzymes that will break down fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. In addition, it will release solutions that will actually reduce the acidity of the chyme that it's coming out of our stomach, so this way the acids don't eat up our small intestines. But let's take a look at what bile does. 
Now here we are again, watching the chyme come through the tubing of our digestive system, and as it enters the small intestine, our gallbladder is going to release this greenish fluid called bile. Now bile is a chemical that breaks up fats. So as the chyme mixes with the bile, the larger fat molecules will be broken down into smaller fat droplets. Once the chyme passes through the beginning sections of the small intestine, it will then go through the entire small intestine and experience chemical digestion there. So let's take a look at the small intestine and the chemical digestion that occurs there. So here we are looking at the small intestine, and we're going to zoom into the small intestine. Now the small intestine has two major functions. The first function is for chemical digestion to occur. So as you see, the enzymes were breaking up these larger particles and leaving the simple nutrients such as glucose and amino acids to make up proteins. So chemical digestion primarily occurs here. There is no mechanical digestion inside of the small intestine. In addition to that, the absorption process is also done in the small intestine. And the nutrients that are brought into the small intestine are absorbed by these projections that you see called villi hair. So as we watch this video here, we're going to watch the chemical digestive process occur. Here's our starch molecule being broken up again by starch enzymes. And then we'll have our fat molecules, represented by a chocolate bar, broken up by fat enzymes. Once these nutrients are broken up out of their larger molecules, they can get absorbed into these villi hair. And the villi hair, through the process of diffusion, will bring these nutrients into the blood vessels. Then, once these nutrients are in the blood vessels, they can travel throughout the body and go to the cells. So this way, the glucose can be used to make energy. Amino acids can be used to make proteins. And the cells can use the nutrients for growth and repair and other cell development. Now once the food is completely absorbed in the small intestine, the undigested food that we couldn't break down gets passed through the large intestine. There are things that our body cannot digest, such as cellulose. Cellulose is a sugar that's found in the cell walls of plants. So whenever you eat fruit or vegetables, we are not going to be able to entirely digest that because we can't break down their cell walls. So the cell walls end up going into our last structure called the large intestine. Now I'll get rid of the, your large intestine is this structure, this large tube located right here. The main function of the large intestine is to absorb water. So the water is taken out of the chyme and reabsorbed back into our body so our cells can use it. Once the water absorption ends, the chyme will become a, a semi-solid waste. And we call this waste feces. So the primary function of the large intestine is to absorb water. However, we do have bacteria inside of our body. Our bacteria feed on the undigested food, and they produce vitamins for us, such as vitamin K and vitamin B. Vitamin K is used for blood clotting, and vitamin B is used for nervous system function and other functions in the body. However, not only do bacteria provide us with vitamins, but they also produce gas for us. Now, once that semi-solid waste is created, the semi-solid waste is then stored in the rectum, and then that semi-solid waste will exit the body through the anus. That concludes our vodcast on the digestive system, boys and girls. Thank you for your time.